topic of top destinations for vacation pops up, most gravitate towards the popular places like Paris, Miami, Prague, or maybe even London. And that's all right. But deep in the heart of a submarine mountain range in the Indian Ocean lies a jewel of a location, a paradise for travelers, the Maldives. You might be hearing that name for the first time, or maybe you have an idea about this tiny exotic nation. Either category you fall into, you won't want to miss any part of this video as we take you through all you need to know about the Maldives, from their exciting history to the top attractions the country has to offer. So make sure you stay with us till the end. They say every man has a story, and despite having a population of less than 600,000, the Maldives has enough men to have a story. And putting the puns aside, the Maldives is actually a nation rich in history and culture dating back to hundreds of centuries ago. That's right. We're talking about thousands of years of history for this seemingly small country, having been inhabited since around the 5th century BC by migrants from what is now today known as Sri Lanka and India. The Maldives was earlier inhabited by the Buddhists before the advent of Islam in the 1100s. You'd be surprised to discover that the Maldives was once a major commercial region when the abundance of shells, a form of currency widely used throughout Asia and the East African coast, and also one of the major marine routes of the Indian Ocean, how times have changed. Speaking of change, the Maldives Islands have also seen a number of changes to the foreign nation in power over the years. From the Portuguese rule in the capital city of Mali till the late 1500s, to being under the protection of the Dutch rulers of Sri Lanka. Many know the British as the main colonizers of this exotic archipelago, but it wasn't until the late 1700s that the British gradually began to take possession of the islands and, almost a century later, formalized their protective status. The British retained that status until July 26, 1965, when the Maldives gained independence under an agreement signed with the United Kingdom that is the country running as a presidential democracy to date. One visit to these lovely islands and one thing you'll easily notice, the wide range of cultural diversity. But why is that? Well, it's largely thanks to the change in the nationality of political power over the years. The African slave ancestry and the proximity to Sri Lanka and South India, which has strongly influenced the cultures. This cultural diversity can be observed in everything around the Maldives, from their music and dance, which has a purely African rhythm, to the language accompanying the dances, which is also reminiscent of East Africa. You're probably wondering why the Maldives isn't recognized globally as a historic site if its history runs that far back, and you're right to think so. We mean, having an ancestral heritage that goes as far back as 4,000 years ago should count as historic enough for a world scale. Sadly, the first Maldivians did not exactly leave any archaeological artifacts due to the nature of their housing, which was built on wood and other perishable materials, so any artifacts would have quickly decayed in the salt and wind of the tropical climate as a result. The Maldives has still managed to preserve some pieces of their ancestry, including their legends and folklore that is passed down from generation to generation and has been embedded into every part of their craftsmanship. We're talking about everything from lacquer works, mat weaving, to quarry rope, calligraphy, braided mats, and jewelry. How about that for cultural preservation? In case you've been wondering why we refer to the Maldives as more than one island, well, it's simply because the Maldives consists of not two, not three, but of 1,192 coral islands. The largest of the islands is the Gan, which belongs to the Maldives. These islands are grouped in a double chain of 26 atolls spread over roughly 90,000 square kilometers, of which only 298 kilometers is dry land. Do some quick math, and that's about 80% of the entire nation being coral islands that rise less than one meter above sea level. The Maldives is one of the world's most dispersed countries as a result, and is also known as the lowest country in the world, with maximum and average natural ground levels of only 2.4 meters and 1.5 meters above sea level, respectively. Of course, areas where construction have taken place have been lifted a bit above sea level, but having the lowest elevation of any country in the world makes the temperatures around the Maldives constantly hot and often humid. A low summer. Maldives have done well in preserving its cultural heritage, but more than that, this country has also preserved nature and animal life better than most countries around the entire world. We're talking about having a range of different habitats, including deep sea, shallow coasts, and reef ecosystems, fringing mangroves, wetlands, and dry land. Hope you're good with numbers because we're about to hit you with some pretty impressive numbers. The Maldives alone houses 1,100 species of fish, five different species of sea turtle, 21 species of whale and dolphin, 400 species of molluscs, 83 species of equine odons, 
and also populated with 120 species of copepods, 15 species of amphipods, and at least 145 crab and 48 shrimp species. If you're a lover of marine animal life, then the Maldives might just be your heaven. The range of aquatic life you'll find in their crystal clear lakes and water bodies is mind-blowing. Anything and everything, from puffer fish, jackfish, lionfish, and oriental sweet lips to reef shark, gropers, eels, snappers, bannerfish, batfish, humphead rassy, spotted eagle rays, to scorpionfish, lobsters, angelfish, the Maldives has it all and much more. One dive into the open water bodies for a swim and you'll be convinced you're in an aquatic documentary simulation. Only that you don't need to be an expert to enjoy the beauty of the Maldives water because the Maldives has the clearest waters in the whole world all year round. Believe it or not, the Maldives waters are clear from January to December, regardless of the weather. So you can put on your mask and goggles at any time of the year and dive in to experience the wonder. You can also scuba dive and explore the sunken Maldives Victory, a ship that sank in 1981 and now provides quite an impressive diving site. But these aren't even half the things the Maldives mesmerizing marine life offers. These waters are probably the best for snorkeling and diving in the world. You can also go water flying or fun tubing. If you're down for the extremely fun experience with your load of adrenaline, then you should definitely try parasailing, kneeboarding, wakeboarding, water skiing, jet skiing, or surfing or maybe even do the stand-up paddle on the unending waterways. If extreme is not necessarily your style, or maybe you're on a fan of getting splashed on, the Maldives still has you covered with the soothing beaches where you can just lay and enjoy the sand or admire the overwhelming beauty of the sunset on the islands and the coral reef. You can also get a boat ride to visit the countless sandbanks, have lunch on the sea, or just stand on the shore and see what species of fish you can catch. These experiences are way more lovely in the Maldives than anywhere else. Trust us. When you eventually get water sick, the Maldives has so much more to offer. From bustling markets, mainly the male fish and local market, to the religious and architectural wonders of the ancient mosque, to the National Museum in Mali, where you can view interesting artifacts like appliances from colonial times, historical stamps, ancient copperware, and porcelain works. Don't forget to take time out in Mali to see the Tsunami Monument, a memorial to the power of Mother Nature. Probably the highlight of a visit to the Maldives for most is the exotic yet relatively cheap spa treatment you can get here. Most of the spas have glass floors that allow you to observe the beauty and activity in the ocean as you enjoy your massage. If you want to take things even further, then an underwater treatment at Lime Spa or an Ayurveda influenced Indian spa treatment at the Jiva Grand Spa is the best pick for you. Facials, manicures, pedicures, detoxification, name it, the Maldives spa experience has it all. After burning all this energy and having so much fun, you're definitely going to get hungry. But not to worry, the Maldives cuisine is all you can hope for and more. Most of the meals feature seafood, coconut, and starches, which are readily available around the island, as well as an abundance of spices like curry due to the Indian influence. Some of the most common traditional dishes in the Maldives include a fragrant fish soup called gadhaiva, mashuni, which is shredded smoked tuna, served with grated coconut, lemon, onions, boshi mashuna, made out of a banana flower salad, and masroshi tuna stuffed chapita. Many dishes common to the Western world like dumplings, fish cake, and fried yams are also common meals in the Maldives, as with an extra sprinkle of Maldivian exogenous. Alcohol is not permitted due to the Maldives being an Islamic nation, but if you must, reach out to a high-end resort around for your boobs. You're probably not gonna need to, however, given the wide range of drinking options available everywhere in the Maldives, like a local brew called Ra, Kahu Sa, which is black tea, or curry sa, which is milk tea. The Maldivian lady is a must for you to taste as well. It's a drink made of white rum skinned, apricot brandy, orange, and pineapple juice. If you want to take your eating experience in the Maldives up by a notch, then you have to head to one of the many restaurants that offer underwater dining. We're talking about lavish, multi-course meals all underwater. If you're one for nightlife, then be sure to check out the Subsic, a deep sea club for a once in a lifetime night out. You can also visit the world's first underwater wine cellar to enjoy the international gourmet cuisine while witnessing the dazzling flora and fauna underwater. Literally breathtaking, but we did tell you it was a traveler's paradise, right? It would be fun to live in the caves at the sea bank like the first Maldivians, but that won't be the most comfortable experience. For more than a comfortable experience, however, the Maldives has a host of exotic hotels and guest houses to stay in that will have you wanting to move in permanently. Here are a few of the very best hotels the island has to offer. Prior to grandness of them all should be the Kunda Du, a hotel developed by Lars Petri, 
a Swedish businessman who developed the country's first seaplane company and co-manages nine other island resorts. The fully solar-powered hotel is an all-inclusive luxury hotel on a tiny coconut forested sandbank with 15 pristine and spacious rooms, each fronted by a wide deck, plunge pool, and ladder into the swirling blue sea. Add all that to the two-hour healing herb treatment in an airy spa, a standby butler, jet skiing, and deep sea fishing, and the Kundadu becomes more than just a home but a haven. Another top hotel to lounge in is the Gili Lakin Fushi, located in the North Mali, which is easily accessible through a 20-mile speedboat transfer and is set in one of the most eye-watering beautiful lagoons in the country with a vision of broad white beaches, shape-shifting sandbanks, and waters with colors of peacock green to sapphire blue. The interiors are designed with handmade wooden furniture, woven lampshades, and bathroom stocked with organic potions and reef-safe sunscreens. Not exotic enough for you? Then try out the Alila with its 80 villas split between overwater and beach. Supported by two restaurants with mouth-watering cuisine, a spa with treatment rooms set to give a calming, cocooning effect, and many more amenities that make it a struggle to ever want to step out of your lodge. If you think 80 villas are private, that's because you haven't seen the Jamera Hotel on the island of Olaha Hali, which has only 76 villas. Some of the largest entry-level villas in the Maldives, with options for your suite specifications. Choosing your suite specs may be hard to do so, with all the options having massive outdoor space and private pools with splendid rooftop decks for stargazing and outdoor movie nights and modern and concrete bathrooms. The Jamera also offers the Inti restaurant, with fresh grilled fish out of turquoise water and a jet ski for hire to hang out with 100 strong pods of bottlenose dolphins catching breakfast just outside the lagoon. The list of top hotels to stay in the Maldives is unending. Still, we have one more for you, and that's the Conrad, located between the beautiful all-natural twin islands of Rangali and Rangali Finoli Hu, where the world's first underwater hotel suite. The Muraka, which was recently installed in 2018, is located alongside a dozen restaurants headed by Chef Christian Penderson. With all this information, we're sure it's a no-brainer for you to visit the Maldives now. So how do you get there? From wherever you are watching this video, the Vilana International Airport is the principal gateway to the Maldives, as it is near the capital city of Mali and is connected by a bridge. The government-owned Island Aviation Services makes international travel possible and operates DHC-6 Twin Otter seaplanes and has numerous Bombardier Dash 8 aircraft to take you to virtually all Maldives domestic airports as well as larger aircraft to neighboring countries like Thailand and India. There are many other means to travel by air, but the terrain of the islands makes traveling by seaplanes or boats more common, with some of the most used seaplanes in the Maldives being under the TMA seaplane fleet. Resorts also tend to organize speedboat transfers, or seaplane flights directly to the resort island for their guests to and from the 18 domestic and international airports in the country. If the airways are not your style, the Maldives has ferries available from Mali to many of the atolls, or you can travel by the traditional Maldivian boat called the Hani, which is relatively cheaper and convenient, although slower. One last thing to keep in mind as you plan your visit is that the best time to visit is from November to April, because this is when the Maldivian weather is at its best, thanks to little precipitation and warm temperatures. Unsurprisingly, that period is the busiest time of year in the Maldives, so if you're looking for a place to retreat without much hustle and bustle, then you have to ignore the sunny and rainy extremes that come between December and May and travel to the Maldives during those periods. Anytime you choose, one thing is for sure. Visiting the Maldives is a must for any and every traveler. That's all you should know before you go to the Maldives. Have you visited the Maldives before? Please feel free to share your experience in the comments section. Don't forget to like and subscribe for more travel recommendations. Travel Guide Channel makes your travel easy.